All right, as our next example, let's work out an expression for the differential of s with independent variables t and v. All right, and so I want to calculate the change in entropy for a process. I'll take t and v to be my independent variables that I'll use to specify uh, my initial and final state to allow me to calculate uh, the change in entropy uh, for that process. So we want to work out an expression for the differential of s, right? Delta s will be the integral of, of that. Um, so I'm going to calculate, <laughs> get an expression for the differential of s with independent variables t and v, and then um, uh, we want our final expression to only contain uh, heat capacities, Cp and Cv, uh, and pressure, volume, and temperature. Okay, any other terms uh, shouldn't be allowed to remain, and so we're going to simplify our expression uh, until we get to that form. All right, so following the same procedure um, as our other uh, examples, is we start by writing out um, our mathematical expression for the differential of s with independent variables t and v. Okay, and so that would be that ds is equal to partial s, partial t, a constant v, dt, plus partial s, partial v, a constant t, dv. Okay, so step one. Step two then is we go to our equation sheet and we see if there's a Maxwell relationship or heat capacity relationship that we can plug in. Okay, and so you know I'm going to tell you again, you know, don't look at these heat capacity relationships uh, just yet. We're actually going to derive those right over here. These are our definitions of Cp and Cv. Okay, but I'm looking for ds dt at constant v and dv dt at constant v, and I see I have ds dv at constant t, which is equal to partial p partial t at constant v. Okay, so making that substitution then, I have the ds is partial s, partial t, at constant v, dt, uh, plus is it partial p, partial t, at constant v, dv. Okay, yes, okay, cool, but I don't have a heat capacity relationship or a Maxwell relationship I could plug in for the first term, um, so I'm, I'm stuck. All right, and so when we're stuck, we go to we go back to our fundamental equation for the property of interest. In this case, it would be you know uh, s, and work out an alternative expression for uh, the differential of interest. In this case, partial s partial t uh, at constant v. Now, if you were to go to your equation sheet, there isn't a fundamental equation for s. Right, the reason being is you know I would just take, say, my combined statement of the first and second law, and I could rearrange and solve for ds, and that would give me a fundamental equation for s. Okay, and so ds appears in both our first expression, uh, differential for u, and our second expression, the differential of h. So either one of them could be used to obtain, essentially, a fundamental equation for s. So in this scenario, then, it's, you know, which, which one do I choose? I'm going to choose the first one, since it involves the variables uh, v and t, right? Because I'll be able to, you know, differentiate with respect to um, um, yeah, either t or v. And in this case, it'll be ds dt at constant v. Um, and so, if I hold v constant, you know, this term's going to uh, go away. Okay. So, when I go back and I write down my fundamental equation, I choose my differential for u. I choose my fundamental equation for u because it contains as one of its variables um, v, right? And since I'm working out a differential with respect to t, but I'm holding v constant, I know that that term's going to go uh, away. Okay. If I were to go to the enthalpy equation, uh, it wouldn't go away, um, and then you still have the same, you know, term here, right? And so it's not going to simplify um, quite as nicely. Okay. All right. So if I want to work out an expression for the differential of s with respect to t at constant v. I'm going to go through and divide my differentials by dt. Okay, and since I can only differentiate with respect to one variable at a time, I hold the other constant. And now these become partial derivatives, so in theory I should make them curly d's. Okay, bam. Okay, now looking at this expression, the first term is du dt a constant v. Okay, so if I were to look back at the equation sheet, we would see that, that is our definition of constant volume peak capacity, so that's just Cv. Then I have T, partial S, partial T, constant V. That's just the differential we're trying to uh, solve for. Okay. And then this last term here, okay, part of my you know um, terrible handwriting, 
you know, this is dv, right? And so partial uh, v, partial t, a constant v. Right? Again, remember, we, this is why we picked our u expression. Since I'm holding v constant, this is just the derivative of a constant, which is 0. Okay? So that leads us to, then, that partial s, partial t, a constant v, is just equal to cv over t. So we are left with, then, that, okay, so if I say plug this in, the ds is equal to cv over t dt plus partial p partial t at constant v dv. Okay? So our final expression only contains heat capacities or pv and t. Okay, cool. Okay, we can simplify this uh, for the case of an ideal gas in a second. Okay? But I'd like to point out one more confusing point. Um, so in this right term, I have dp, dt, a constant v. All right, so oftentimes, you know, this confuses students. You know, here's a differential, uh, a constant v. So, you know, it's like v is constant, you know. So how could I integrate that with respect to v? Okay, you have to keep in mind, you know, what this means. And so I have, say, a three-dimensional surface relating uh, pressure, time, pressure, temperature, and volume. What this would correspond to then is I'm introducing a, uh, say, cutting plane uh, at constant volume. So I'm slicing my three-dimensional surface uh, via this cutting plane at a specific volume. I get a resulting two-dimensional surface, right, of, say, pressure versus temperature at that fixed V, right, and I'm calculating, you know, that rate of change, okay? But then, you know, if I were to change the cutting plane I used, if I were to go back and change the volume used, I'd cut my three-dimensional surface, i get a new two-dimensional surface, that would have a different, you know, um, numerical value for dp dt at that uh, different v, right? And so, you know, even though while I'm differentiating v is being held constant, the numerical value of dp dt is going to change with v, okay? And so this term is a function of, of v, okay? Just, you know, subtlety which students often find uh, confusing, okay? So uh, next, uh, I'd like to play with, well, we're going to look at the specific case of an ideal gas, okay? Um, and, you know, one thing that comes up a lot is, you know, actually, let me make sure I didn't lose any terms, is, you know, how this thing's often simplified. So I plugged in my max relation for ds dv at constant t, ds, yes, to dp dt at constant v. Yeah, okay. So um, let's simplify this for the case of an ideal gas, okay? And in simplifying for a case of an ideal gas, we'll see um, an alternative expression that often comes up, um, well, an alternative way to express this um, that, that's commonly used. Okay, so if I were to look at the case of an ideal gas, okay, which is given by the equation of state, PV equals RT. What I need to evaluate is differential of P with respect to T at constant V, right? So I need to know how P changes with respect to T um, at constant V. So I need to know a relationship between P, T, and V. How P changes with T and V, that's given by my equation of state. And so if I solve for P, right, now I have a relationship for how P changes with uh, T and V, right? Remember, R is just my molar gas constant. Here, right, we're, we're looking at the case of an uh, ideal gas, but this would be true in general uh, if you were to use <coughs> your favorite cubic equation of state. So if I work out this differential then, so I have partial P, partial T, at constant V. That's going to be equal to, then, partial RT over V, partial T, at constant V. So R is my molar gas constant. It's constant. I could pull it out. V is constant because it's being held constant as I differentiate. So if I pull those out, then I have R over V times partial T, partial T, at constant V, where partial T, partial T, Right, it's just going to be 1. So I'm left with just R over V. So that leads then, for the case of an ideal gas, the ds of my ideal gas is equal to CV over T dt uh, plus R over V dV. Okay? So this is true for the case of an ideal gas. So first, as compared to internal energy, um, we see that entropy of an ideal gas is a function of both temperature and volume. All right, just like for the um, case of uh, an ideal or entropy, when we kept temperature and pressure constant, um, 
we showed, uh, sorry, the, the pop-up tripped me up. So just like when we worked on an expression for entropy using independent variables temperature and pressure, we were able to show that entropy was a function of temperature and pressure, whereas enthalpy was only a function of T. Here we again see that when I use temperature and volume as my independent variables, U is only a function of T, but S is a function of both uh, T and V. All right, so I uh, said we would you know, try and simplify this a little bit. Um, and so we'll not simplify it, but look at you know, another common way to represent this. And we did the same trick when we had entropy with independent variables T and P. Okay? So namely, the trick we're gonna apply here is that the differential of log T right, is equivalent to one over T dt. Likewise, the differential of log v is equal to 1 over v dv. Okay? And so what that allows you to do is rewrite this as ds ideal gas is equal to cv ideal gas d log t plus r d log v. Okay? So here's an alternative correct expression. And then what's often done with this is, well, if I assume that my heat capacity is independent of temperature, okay, um, and then you know R is just my constant, that would allow me to write delta S. So if I were to integrate this from, so let's let's just write it, right? If we were to integrate this um, as being the integral from some initial state, say uh, not to some final state uh, one be the integral from T naught to T1 CV ideal gas D log T plus um, R times the integral from V naught to V1 D log V. Okay, so if I were to assume, so if I assume that my heat capacity is independent of temperature, I could pull that out as a constant and I'd be left with just CV ideal gas log T1 over T0. The final term, since R is a constant, right, it's just R log V1 over V0. Okay. Cool. All right, and so even if we didn't make those simplifications, right, it gives us some idea uh, for, say, how entropy should change with respect to T uh, and how it should scale uh, with V. Okay. Cool. And so over narrow temperature ranges, this might be a reasonable approximation. Cool. All right, let's look at one more uh, relationship that you may have um, used in your thermal one class. So oftentimes in thermal one, you'll look at pro um, isentropic processes. So if I were to look at an isentropic process, that correspond to delta S of an ideal gas is equal to zero, right? The change in entropy is, is zero, right? A process at constant entropy, right? So what it really is isentropic is ds, right, is equal to zero. So for the case of an ideal gas, right, if I play with this expression, um, what I can do is that is zero then is CV ideal gas log T1 over T0 plus R log V1 over V0. So if I play with my log rules, okay, I can bring this up as a power that I raise T1 over T0 to. So this would be log T1 over T0 raised to the CV ideal gas plus, same thing, I could bring R up as a power, log V1 over V0 raised to power R. Okay. Um, so you can rearrange things uh, uh, however you want. Um, so let's do maybe, let's bring this over to the left hand side. And so I can have negative log V1 over V0 uh, raised to the R is equal to log T1 over T0, right? Or equivalently, um, I could have just combined them, right? And we're going to get the same expression uh, either way. It doesn't really matter, okay? Because this, okay, negative would be equivalent to, you know, computing the inverse of this. And so you can write it uh, however you want, V1 over V0 raised to the negative R, um, but, you know, or you can just flip it, okay, log, and I'm just going to flip it, V0 over V1 to the R, and I drop my CV ideal gas. So if I take the exponential of both sides, 
Now I have T1 over T0 raised to the CV ideal gas is equal to V0 over V1 Oop. raised to the power of R. Okay, um, Cool. Or if you want to simplify it just a little more, I'm going to write this as V0 over V1 is equal to T1 over T0 raised to the CV ideal gas divided by R. Okay, So it allows you to say calculate um, your final or you know what your say initial molar volume would be um, for a given change in temperature for that um, isentropic process. Cool.